Last time on Transistors, we took a look at the XOR gate. So naturally today, we're going to be looking at its inverted cousin, the XNOR gate. You're watching another episode of Transistors. Hello and welcome back to Transistors. So, just to very briefly recap on the concept of an XNOR gate, well, it's a gate that gives you true when both inputs are the same. In other words, it is an inversion of what the XOR gate does. So yeah, you can even think of this as sort of an equality check across two bits. How are we going to approach this sort of inversion right, of an XOR gate is exactly the same as when we're looking at inversions between say OR and NOR, OR AND and NAND. And that is, you notice how the schematic is basically just flipped top to bottom, right? The approach is exactly the same when we transform an XOR gate to an XNOR gate. Let's take a look at our simulation. So right, remember how we started the previous episode comparing an XOR gate to a fancy OR gate that you could actually switch on or off? Well, conceptually, the XNOR gate is kinda similar. However, there is a little difference, and that is now, instead of being an enable switch, Instead, think of this as an override switch. What this means is, at any point of time in which this is switched on, what is going to happen is our output is definitely going to be 1. Now, I'm going to switch this off first, and well, if you recall how your NOR gates actually work, right, the moment any one of the inputs are true, the output goes low. However, if I were to actually switch this on, as mentioned, we override our output our output is forcibly 1, right? So no matter what input I do here, it doesn't matter. We now have an overridden output. With this idea in mind, we can start to construct our XNOR gate. The idea is, an XNOR gate behaves very much like a NOR gate, right? As long as only one of the inputs are true or none of them. But when both are true, the output is now wrong. And what we need to do is we need to trigger our override to come along and set this output high. So what this means is, again, instead of driving our override using a separate pin or separate input, instead, we simply need to use an AND gate. The idea is, if both of the inputs are true, then we want the override to happen, like so. Now, watch what happens here. Of course, when none of the inputs are true, that's fine. If either one is true, that's fine as well, we get normal NOR behavior. However, when both goes true, our override goes high now, and as you can see, we are getting correct XOR output. So this is our analogy. This is basically, you know, the XNOR equivalent of having a fancy OR gate. Of course, this is a fancy NOR gate, and our additional pin here is an override instead of an enable. With this idea in mind, we can now build our transistor-based gate. You realize that it's very similar, just flipped on its head. The left half of our setup is an NPN AND gate, and the output actually provides a ground state for our NOR gate over here. Again, we have our inputs A and B feeding both, and the idea is, if only one of the inputs are true, right, then our NOR gate works as per normal. Of course, same deal when both are off, we will get our high output because of the pull up resistor over here. But what happens when both inputs go true? When both inputs are true, by right, your NOR gate is supposed to give you zero. But our AND gate will feed it with a high instead of a zero, and as a result, our final output is forced high. So that's the idea, right? Because this gate is now no longer able to you know, push a low state out, it's not even getting a low state where it's supposed to be low. And that's why you get your high output. Again, extremely complex because, you know, you're gonna have to trace it down over here and then up over here, right? So instead, let's take a look at our mixed version. Again, our gates here are exactly the same. We have an AND gate below, feeding our NOR gates on top. Let's see how this works. The idea is, as long as any input is low, well, our AND gate is going to push a low state up through to our NOR gate. And as a result, our NOR gate can function normally. However, when both inputs go through, 
our AND gate cuts off the low state going up to our NOR gate. As a result, everything is floating, but we use a pull-up resistor to pull our state up to our high state. That's the idea, and hopefully you can see how this parallels our XOR gate. With this in mind, let's quickly move on to our schematic before actually building this on our breadboard. If you remember our setup from the previous episode for our XOR gate, you will find that this setup is fairly similar. Of course, we start with our power rails, and this time we're going to look at this from right to left, because that is the sort of flow, logically speaking. So we start off with our PNP end gate, which is connected to ground. This then leads us on to our NPN NOR gate, and that goes back to high state through a pull-up resistor. So this is our full transistor setup. Let's now look at our inputs via the two switches. Again, one switch feeds the top two transistors, the other switch feeds the lower two. Again, don't mind these current limiting resistors, the idea is we are letting less current through to the NPN transistor. Of course, we want to see the output, which is why we'll hook up an additional LED, this time on this side, right? And the reason being, this is the side that has the pull-up resistor. This is the side that basically shows our output. That's the general idea of this setup. Let's now move on to our breadboard to see how this works. And all right, here is our setup on a physical breadboard itself. I'm going to go ahead and just get the power in. And of course, the moment we have the whole setup powered up, right, my rails are now high, the LED lights up. The moment any button is pressed down, the LED goes off. But if I were to hold both down like so, the LED comes on again. And this would be your X nor behavior. Right, as long as the two buttons are in the same state, this will light up. As long as they are different, it will go off. So this has been our actual XOR gate. Of course, our two NPN transistors are here, our two PNP transistors are here. And yeah, depending on what buttons are being pressed, we are either sending the ground state through, or we are not. So yeah, that has been our XOR gate. And there we go. We've just taken a look at our XNOR gate implemented using transistors. What this means is we've just exhausted all of our basic gates, right? This is basically all there is. And what this means is we can start to move into just doing some fancy things with our transistors. We are nearing the end of the series now, but I kind of wanted to show you some things a transistor can do and, you know, how it can actually help out in a circuit. So yeah, we may be taking a look at maybe, well, two or three more episodes before we wrap everything up. So yeah, that's what we're looking at for the coming weeks. That's all there is for this particular episode of Transistors though. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment, and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.